Swoosh founder, Melissa Armo, along with Shorevest Wealth Management CEO, Rob Luna. Uh, Melissa, let me get to you. Uh, what's your take on the markets right now? It's You need some Pepto-Bismol, don't you? We had the big <laughs> sell-off last week, and now here we are, up 443 points. Is this pretty much this volatility here to stay? Volatility is here to stay. It came in in 2018. I don't think it's going anywhere. I really didn't look today as a strong day. I know we mm. gapped up a lot this morning, but overall, this is just kind of like a dead cat bounce. It's something that traders use as a terminology. I really think we might still be lower because the fact is that overall, the market's strong, but everything that happens, every headline that comes out, every news thing, it, the market is reacting very volatile to it, selling off quickly and then bouncing again and selling yeah. off quickly. And the range is broadening. It, we're still strong, but the range from the high to where we're at in this space is like wide. It's getting wider and wider and wider. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, Rob, um, you say, look, we are trading in a range. But to uh, Melissa's point, that range is like the size of the Grand Canyon right now. <laughs> Well, it's like a size of the Grand Canyon if you look at the minuscule ranges that we're trading in over the prior 18 to 24 months. But I think, you know, in general, this 11 to 12 percentage point range that we're trading in, you know, quite honestly, actually is normal. And we got up towards the end of the top of that range. All these headline risks, whether it's tariffs, it's rising interest rates, the market was looking for a reason to sell. It got it. Now we're back towards the bottom of this range. And what you're seeing is as we hit the 200-day moving average support, buyers are starting to come back in this morning. And but I look at that last hour. The last hour is going to be very <laughs> telling to see if we could hold up today. Yeah, good luck product predicting where it's going to go. Uh, let me follow up with you then, Rob. Uh, you say, look, as far as the economy goes, it's all flashing green. We just spoke with uh, Steve Forbes. He agrees the economy is doing well. We get the earnings next month. Um, assuming they're pretty solid, how important is that for this market? I think it's extremely important, right, because there is a lot of headline risk out there right now. Investors mm. are definitely nervous, so they need this reassurance from Wall Street, from the companies, from the CEOs out there, telling them that things are still good. And I think if that happens, we could head back towards the top of that range. And like we said, that could be an 8 to 10, 10 percentage point move. So if you're an investor, you don't necessarily want to be on the sidelines and miss out on that. That's a good point. Uh, Melissa, I spoke with a money manager this morning who said, look, I'm looking for a sector that has the least downside, the most upside. Side, and I'm thinking, well, yes, we're all doing that, right? He said that sector was energy. It's been beaten down too much and has a long way to go on the upside. What do you say? I don't agree with that. I like the idea of buying strength. So mm. right now, the, the strongest things out there are banks and the tech sector, except for Facebook. <laughs> Take Facebook out of that equation, which yeah. is unfortunate, but still I like Amazon, Netflix, Apple I still like, Google still looks good, and the banks, J.P. Morgan Chase. I mean, I still think that you, you buy strong stocks. They're coming in. They're coming in. Wait, though. Don't buy yet. Wait till they're showing a strength for about a week, two weeks. You want to see consecutive green, green days, just like, mm. like if we follow through and rally today and all next week into the start of April, that would be a good time come second quarter earnings season to start getting back into these strong stuff. I don't want to buy stuff that's weak, that's down a lot, that has a huge upside. I want to buy stuff that's proving that it's right. strong even when the market was falling in the last week. And Rob, you know, that has been the tech stocks. A lot of money has gone into tech over the last 18 months and, and beyond. Um, is that still the leading sector, these big tech companies, or are you seeing money go elsewhere? Yeah, you know, I, I think so, Ashley. Uh, you know, really, if you were looking at that rising interest rates right now, and the only way that your portfolio is going to be able to combat that is yeah. through growth. And it's very tough to get top-line growth outside of technology right now. The financials could definitely do it. Um, but, you know, they are actually been struggling here quite a bit, so I'm a little bit nervous about what's going on with them. But the old technology stocks, Amazon, Google, two of our top, you know, largest holdings right now, we're continuing to stick with them. And I agree, momentum is where you want to be, but I don't know that you necessarily would wait for them to completely break out. Use this opportunity when they're pulling back technically to enter in the positions. And, you know, 10 to 15 percent from where they were at before is a pretty attractive entry point in our view. Melissa, I want to ask you the same question I asked Steve Forbes. Do you think all the noise is coming out of Washington that at this point investors pay much attention or does it have an impact on the market? Of course it has an impact on the market. All you have to do is look at the last week or even look back to February. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because I think the market's going to shake all of this off, but you right. can't ignore it. We live in a 24-hour, seven-day week news cycle. Every time you get up, you see this thing, that thing, the other thing. Mr. Forbes was talking about 60 minutes. I mean, even something like that could have affected the market this it's morning. True. You can't escape it. Yeah, Rob, what do you tell your clients? Ignore it? Just focus on the fundamentals of these companies? 
Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, when you look at this whole noise about the trade tariffs, we have a $375 billion deficit right now. Mm -hmm. You know, what was on the table was only $60 billion. These are not huge numbers right now. And let's face it, Trump is not going to get any, you know, style points for finesse here. This is his <laughs> negotiation style. No. He's trying to get China to the table. I think it's a lot of noise right now, and investors should just pay attention to the fundamentals. Wise words indeed from both of you. Melissa, Rob, thank you very much Thanks. for joining us today. Thanks, the Dow up, by the way, 500 points above 24,000. One of those days. Uh, well, indeed, there may be a rally on Wall Street, but shares of Facebook eh, taking another hit after the FTC says it is investigating the company. Can Mark Zuckerberg fix this mess? Our panel discusses it next.